Mm. Love it. Hey everyone, let's um, <laughs> let's talk about life right now. Um, I'm talking just life updates. What's happened in August? This will also be things that I particularly enjoyed as far as. Um, movies or TV shows or things like that. Um, so basically non, there might be a couple of book related things sometimes, um, or updates, but generally it's going to be just other stuff. <laughs> so, um, I have some, I'm drinking Steven's mint truffle hot cocoa. And here's the thing. It's delicious. <laughs> but here's the thing. Um, I've always fought myself, I guess. Cause it's like, why would I want the hot chocolate? It's August right now. It's the last day of August, but it's still warm weather outside. But I've been craving the mint truffle hot chocolate. Again, this is Steven's brand. Um, my other favorite is candy cane and I also like the apple cider, but besides the point, it's like, why would I want hot chocolate in the summer? I shouldn't be having hot chocolate. That's a winter Christmas thing, right? That's been my thinking for years. But then I thought I can darn well have hot chocolate whenever I want it. And if people give me grief or if you want hot chocolate, have it. I don't care if it's the hottest day of the year. If you want it, you have it. Um, because here's the thing. People drink hot coffee and hot tea all year round. So why is hot chocolate the exception? I don't care for the smell of coffee and I can't have the tea because there's a lot of plants I'm allergic to and I'm not going to mess with that and have an allergic reaction. Um, I know I can have peppermint tea, um, which is like an herbal tea. I know I can do that but I have trouble with sweetening it because I am allergic to honey. So I just avoid the tea. I don't like the smell of coffee. So I avoid coffee. I hate walking down the coffee aisle at the grocery store. I really don't like that, but hot chocolate, particularly the Stevens brand. I've tried other brands and I haven't particularly enjoyed them. They've been not great. <laughs> um, so Stevens, is where it's at for me. So I love it. Um, so I'm having mint truffle. Have it year round. Again, people drink hot coffee and hot tea year round. Hot chocolate should not be an exception to that. So I'm going to have it. Yay. <laughs> okay. Um, I have a couple of things written down because I wanted to remind myself and kind of talk about things. Um, so on the, let's start with the biggest thing and just get that out of the way. I had on the second an MRI on my foot and ankle for my, the left foot and ankle because I've been having pain and the pain has increased and it's gotten more consistent to where it's 24 seven. Basically it's all day, every day. Um, and it hurts to have pressure on the foot. So I saw the podiatrist and, um, I have a fracture and cartilage damage. And basically what's wanting to happen is my foot is wanting to collapse where it will be a flat foot, which will create other issues, um, as is my understanding. So, um, hang on, putting the hot chocolate down. So <laughs> I have to have surgery on my foot. They're going to fuse the bones. It's four to six weeks of absolute non weight bearing. I'm having surgery on the first Wednesday in October, which is October 6th is when I'll be having the bone fusion on my left foot. So good news is I don't have to have anything done with my ankle. My ankle's good. I think that soreness of my ankle is just because I've been walking differently. Hmm. So yeah, there's that. So I do have to go in for surgery. I will be trying to participate in Becca's Bookopoliathon and G's Valerium Magical Readathon for the month of September. 
I've created a catwalk TBR as well for the month of September. My focus will be on the Bookopoly readathon and the Magical readathon for the month of September. My catwalk TBR will be kind of on the back burner because I'm planning on reading ebooks for my catwalk TBR and that will take place. I'm just going to let that kind of just drag through two months. So I'm going to try really hardest to complete um, my hardest to complete the two readathons in September. Um, but the TBR will kind of catwalk TBR will be for kind of September and October. Um, I have to take at least no less than two weeks. He wants me to take at least three weeks off from work. So I don't know how I'm going to feel reading wise. If I'm not going to want to read, how much sleeping I'm going to be doing while I've been recovering from the surgery or any of that. Um, so that's why I'm not going to do an October TBR. If I finish all of my books, um, which I seriously doubt that. Um, but if I finish everything, then I'll just kind of mood read. I guess I have a hard time with that because I have the hardest time picking books because I just want to read everything and I just have a hard time picking the books. So there's that. Um, and I don't know, I'm assuming the surgery is going to be a same day thing where I go in and then I'm released the same day that I won't be overnight in the hospital or anything like that. That's my assumption and what it sounded like when I talked to the doctor originally. So I have to go in on September 13th for a pre-op appointment is what they're calling it, where he's going to go into more detail as far as if I need a knee scooter, if I need a handicap plaque to, because I, I'm not on weight bearing for, you know, for a couple of months to, so I can go into other appointments and not have to walk very far and stuff. So we'll see how that goes. Um, good news. If I have to drive, I'd be able to, because again, it's the surgeries on my left foot. So, but, um, so, and September 13th is my grandma's birthday. I, she's going to be 80 something, 88, 87, I think. I don't know. Um, anyway, summer, maybe 89. I don't remember. Anyway, so that's easy to remember. Pre-op appointment on my grandma's birthday. And this is my grandma that lives in Colorado. So, yeah. So that's the <laughs> biggest thing that's been happening and will continue to happen for a little bit. So, yeah, there's that. So um, I will try to do quite a bit of pre-filming so that there will still be videos coming out when I'm in recovery mode. If I feel like filming, I obviously will, but I'm trying to get certain things pre-filmed. So I don't know, there may not be an August reading wrap up unless I'm feeling good in, um, or no, there'll be an August wrap up. There may not be a September reading wrap up and a September like book haul for any books that I get um, from like BookBub or things like that. I may hold off on doing things like that until November, unless I'm feeling well enough in October after the surgery to do those. So we'll kind of play it by ear, but things I can pre-film are like books from certain states and countries and things like that, that I want to read. Pretty simple stuff that's very easy to read. Um, and we'll just go from there. So we'll see. There definitely will still be some stuff coming up, but certain videos may not appear because they're more time sensitive as far as you have to wait until a certain point to film them. Like what you've read in a certain month, you do at the end of the month. Anyway, so we'll just kind of play it by ear. Okay. Um, fun thing woo, is there's only just a couple of things I wanted to really talk about because life's just been pretty normal. Um, my grandma came and visited. We've all been vaccinated and we've kept it safe. We stayed pretty much at home most of the time and not, you know, and stuff. I've had to work. But so she came up with my aunt, uncle, and my cousin and my cousin's daughter. So my second cousin. So that was fun um, to kind of see them. And yeah, we were supposed to go to a different cousin's wedding at the end of October, but since I have to have the surgery, we're not going to the wedding. So 
because I just can't afford to take more than the three weeks off from work. Otherwise, that's being the whole month of October off. <laughs> and that's so that's four weeks and I can't do that. Um, so three weeks. So there's that. That was that was fun. Um, the other thing, too, is I have my mom signed up for Hulu because she loves to watch MASH. I absolutely love MASH, too. I may watch that at a future point. <laughs> Rewatch that. I remember her watching MASH like crazy when I was little. Um, and I would sit and watch it with her. So not only do I enjoy MASH, but it has that nostalgia or nostalgic thing to it. So I really love MASH um, with Alan Alda and um, things like that. So that TV show MASH. Um, I love cooking shows. I like to cook. I just get frustrated because I don't know the difference between the, a dash and a pinch and whatever they say. So sometimes I get frustrated with recipes and especially when things don't turn out. But I do like to cook. I do like to bake. Um, I really love the cooking shows. They get me hyped for cooking. And if I could physically stand in the kitchen for extended period of time and cook, I would. But right now I can't because that's the other thing is I have to, right now I have to wear this big boot that goes up to the knee to try and support my foot a little bit more. Well, that makes you walk different. And so that's causing increased back pain because I'm walking differently. So it's kind of hard to, to do that. So right now I am not cooking. It's yeah. Anyway, so my mom's doing the cooking and I really want to cook, but we're also going to go through our cookbooks that we have in the pantry. We have a whole shelf of them. It's so messy but we don't really use them. So we're going to go through them and go through the ones that we do want to use and want to keep where we do like most are intrigued by most of the recipes or have used some recipes and like the recipes. Other books we will donate to a thrift store or we have a local thrift store here that's widely known in Utah called DI for Desert Industries. Um, and it's just a con like a consignment thrift store basically. So you can donate books, you can donate clothing, a, a bunch of stuff. It's, you know, just a thrift store. So we may donate there. There's other places to donate. Um, so we'll, we'll figure things out, um, as far as books, cookbooks that we want to get rid of because we're just not going to use them. Um, uh, but we will keep a good amount of them. So we'll, we're planning on doing that today when I'm filming this after I have my therapy appointment. So <laughs> yeah. So there's that. Um, so anyway, so I was talking about MASH and Hulu and then it led to the, so cooking shows, that's what I was mentioning, cooking shows. I have, because she got Hulu, I am, we've created a little profile for me so I can log into the, her Hulu account and I can watch and I've started rewatching MasterChef with, uh, Gordon Ramsay's the biggest, the big one there and he's consistently like every season, um, but yeah, so I restarted with season one, finished season one the, the past week, and I'm now on episode three of season two. <clears throat> and even though I remembered who won in season one from when I originally watched it, I still loved every moment of it. Not that long ago, I, re I watched the British baking show on Netflix. And there's other little things on Netflix that I could do, like the there's a Christmas episode or a couple of Christmas seasons or something like that. So I will do those. But right now I'm on a Master Chef kick <laughs> and just rewatching. So I'm I'm enjoying that right now. Um, okay, hmm. there's some movies that I watched. Let's talk about these movies real quick. And then that's pretty much all I'll have to say <laughs> for this video. Um, I rewatched. The Lorax, which is a movie based on a Dr. Seuss book, I believe. I never read it. And I didn't, I mean, there's might be a few Dr. Seuss books that I read as a child, but I don't remember that one. The Cat in the Hat was the biggest one. Did he do one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish? I think he did. And that's the biggest one that even better than Cat in the Hat for me as a child. Um, so we're, I watched the Lorax 
if I had to give it a star, I'd give it a five star. Absolutely loved it. The importance of, you know, basically taking care of your environment. Because in it, they basically live in this place where trees are plastic. So they're not getting that oxygen and the, you know, the good things from real trees because they're, it's just a mess. But then finally they realize, no, it'd be a good idea to have real trees. So, yeah. Um, so taking care of your environment. Uh, so it was a really cute story. I loved it. I love the music in it. Just love it. And the one song, Let It Grow. Because you can't reap what you don't sow is the line in there. The, so the Let It Grow song at the end. Made me cry <laughs> every stink of time I hear that song. I just cry. I love that because you can not only can you apply it towards like growing a tree, but just to life in general, you know, you can't reap what you don't sow uh, with trying things and practicing and you know, things like that. So it just, it, it gets me in the feels every time. So that's one movie. The other one is a series of movies that I saw and that's the first street movies. Oh, the Lorax I think is rated G. At most, it's PG here in the United States. I don't know the movie rating outside of the United States, but I think the Lorax is rated G, which is like for everyone at every age, meant specifically for kids, I think. So I think it's a G. Might be PG at the most, but I really think it's G. Anyway, so that's the Lorax. Um, <laughs> so I watched the Fear Street movies. These are R. Um, they're, the language is a little rough at times, uh, but that's to be expected in horror films. The I think the reason why they're rated R is because of how freaking gory it is, and I loved it. I love the gore. Um, so <laughs> I would have given them all, I think. Okay, so you have the first one, which is based in 1994. That, for me, that was fun because 1994, I was born in 83. So I remember being in, was it first grade? And I thought it was such a big deal when the years were changing from 1989 to 1990. I was so excited for that. Small, small things <laughs> for me, right? Um, I was so excited for that. And um, so the 1994, I would have been... 10 years old for most of 1994 because I know it wouldn't have turned 11 until December. So for most of 94, I would have been 10. So great childhood memories. Some of the, you know, like the styles and hairstyles and things um, were just a great trip down memory lane. Um, these, the kids in the movie are in high school and I, I remember when I was 10 years old thinking like how the high school was portrayed in movies and in books is what my high school experience would be like, which it was not. It was crap. But <laughs> that's what I wanted for my experience. So that was really fun. I liked that one. So then Netflix. So, okay. So, and these are all on Netflix. So number two was the Fear Street in 1978. Um, so all of these Netflix movies major trigger warning for the gore. Um, the one in 1994, you have a female, female relationship and there's a part where they do make out. Um, so there's, so, you know, there's that, which is, and the thing about that, it was interesting to see how much they had to try and hide that because it was not as accepted in the nineties as it is now. So, um, so you do get that sense that it was very secretive and hush hush. Anyway, so moving on to first street number two, which was based in 1978. Um, so this one, it kind of starts out in 1994, but then it goes back down memory lane to where, um, the lady that's talking about the curse, um, uh, went to summer camp in 1978. Um, the triggers I would say for that one are, drugs and sex and, um, obviously gore. So, I mean, the biggest thing with the sex is you know that they're doing it. You, the only body part you see is a man's butt. You see the butt cheeks and I think you see it twice. <laughs> um, they're kind of firm. Anyway, 
Um, so that was the 1978. That one, I thought, I think that one was a little harder to watch because a lot of the gore and death were with children. Um, granted, these are not little children. They're teenagers, but still children. Um, there was one part that actually made me gag, but I still loved the movie. Moving on, I'm running out of time on this <laughs> camera. Um, so number three was goes back to uh, 1666. Now, only I would say at, at the very least half of the movie is based in, in 1666, where any same-sex attraction is very much, it's seen as more of like witchcraft type of a thing. Um, any thing you do wrong for the anything a woman does wrong is seen as witchcraft and then you must be hanged um so gore on that one um there is a part where the two women uh make out someone sees them and they're obviously blamed for there's the witch hunt starts because bad things start to happen it's blamed on them hence the witch hunt so, um, once that story ends from 1666, it transitions back to 1994 and it ends in the mall, um, more gore. Um, I love it. And I was not expecting the twist. I grew up loving Fear Street. It's the Fear Street vibes. It's not really based on any movies. There are some Fear Street books that do talk about Sarah Fear, um, and that that I recall. It's been so long since I've read them, but I would say this is more of the taking the legend of Sarah Fear and the atmosphere of Fear Street, but it's not based really on any of the Fear Street books. Uh, so be aware of that. Just because you may like the movie does not mean you'll necessarily like the books because it's just the atmosphere of the books, the location type of a thing. So, but I loved it. It was, it was great. I, and now I really want to go back and read the Fear Street books because that's what I grew up on. Um, and I know I'm not the target demographic, so I may think they're a little bit more cheesy, but I still love them. <laughs> I just love them. Um, but yeah, so that's been the month of August and kind of what I'm looking forward to for September and October. The other thing with September, I don't know how my reading is going to go because the first Monday in September, I don't know the exact date, is uh, Labor Day. I work in retail. Labor Day is a huge sale day. Um, the other biggest big sale days are Pioneer Day and Black Friday. So it's going to be crazy busy leading up to it. And then it's going to be the busyness will die down um, during that week. And then it'll kind of be back to normal the middle two weeks of September. The last week of September, my mom's going on vacation, so all household chores will fall to me. Um, it's usually split, but with my pain and stuff, there's some stuff I'm limited to and can't do right now, so she's taking it over. She is a wonderful human being. Love her to pieces. Very sweet. She's had no complaints doing this because she knows how much pain I'm in, but I try to do what I can, um, but she definitely goes above and beyond with taking care of things in the house, so... That week it'll fall to me. I'll just have to do bits and pieces throughout that week. So I will be busy. So I don't know how my reading is going to go in September because I'll also have to make sure I'm doing things to make sure that I'm ready for surgery the first Wednesday in October. So that's it. That's life so far. Um, I don't know. I'll still write things down for updates because I do want to do this again. I've really enjoyed this but I don't know if I'll be able to film it or if the next time I do this, it will be for the month of September and October. So we'll see kind of how things go, but that's it for now. So in the description box, you will find all my social media platforms. If you would like to be friends on any of those, I would absolutely love that. Um, but until next time, stay true to yourself and enjoy a good book. And I'll talk to you later.